Hello once again, my fellow programmers. Once more, welcome back to this uh, PLC animator course. For our section, which is more than 100 problem and drill solving, we finally get to exercise number one. So thank you very much for your patience, guys, your patience. And thank you also for uh, purchasing the uh, animator uh, course. I know these are uh, somewhat lengthy classes, but I hope you guys are all pros and you can start practicing for the big leagues. Remember, in the real world, you're not going to have a Rodrigo that is going to help you out. Okay. However, we are right now, we are going to help you uh, solve the processes. So therefore, my first recommendation when it comes to solving these types of exercises is you guys can take these videos for problem solving as exercises, as, as examples, as guides and testing. But please try to solve them yourselves. It doesn't matter or nothing happens if you get something wrong. Okay. Do weird stuff. Do strange things. Try to create processes that haven't or that don't exist yet or that we haven't thought about related to animations. And you guys, for some reason, added whatever instruction and it did something strange. Do it here. Don't do it out there in the real world. In the real world, you should already have all the knowledge you need. Okay, so you need to stimulate these types of things in your mind. And you'll start noticing that you're going to really increase your level. Okay? You're going to up your game. Now, having said this, I'm going to start reading the instructions and I'm going to start giving you my indications. Now, I don't have the absolute truth. I can also get this wrong. But the solutions that I'm going to provide now are the best for me, for my, for my situation right now. So the advantages of me solving these drills and these tests is so that you guys can start seeing the naturality, so to in a way of speaking, for solving, of me solving how to solve these exercises. Okay. So the real way to solve this has a certain process. So I need you guys to look at my errors so that you guys can learn from them. You don't make them again. So maybe with this learning curve, while uh, working on the field, you guys have already started. And that's what this is for. Maybe it will take a little bit more time and maybe it's going to be more uh, videos that we're going to add. But it's going to be completely worth it, guys. Trust me. This is going to be for you guys, for your eyes only. Check how I saw them. Try to improve them. And check to see if these are the same things or if you're actually on the right path. Now, guys, first thing we need to analyze is our instructions. Not for programming, but the instructions that we're going to leave as software developers for you guys. Okay, now this exercise's instructions are three of them. First, we're going to read them, then we're going to analyze them, and we're going to try to uh, solve them better. And this is where I'm going to recommend that you pause the video, try to solve it, and once you see that uh, the exercise, if you solved it correctly, uh, you need to proofread it. So instruction number one, power lamp. Okay. Power it on for seven seconds using a timer. And we're getting indication of what type of uh, timer it is. This is a huge advantage. We need a timer on delay. So we had seen them already in our animator PLC course. 
And then we also get that that very same lamp, we need to power it off for uh, three seconds. Now here we're using a timer on delay uh, timer. And we're getting the recommendation that we use a different type of file for our timers, which in this case is T uh, semicolon one. They're very different. The one and the two. And then instruction number three says, repeat steps two consecutive times. Now, which instruction do you think we're going to use for uh, this counting? Obviously, a counter. Now, my logic currently indicates that we're going to use a coil. We're going to use a timer type, which is timer on delay. And we're going to use a different timer, which is timer on delay, but with a different file. And now we're also going to use a counter. That's what my logic indicates. Now, from this, pause the video and try to solve this yourselves. All right. Now, we're getting uh, instructions that there's only, there's one output only. Okay. Now, we notice that they match with our lamp, which let's say that this is our physical output which we already know how a virtual plc what a virtual plc looks like and let's suppose that this output is already assigned and it's already connected to our plc so now it's uh it's giving us the instruction on where it matches now we get instruction number one power on lamp for seven seconds so we need a timer now so therefore we need a timer on delay and we have our first timer on delay. And we're going to take advantage of this because it's telling us that we need a second timer. So we're going to add a new line. Okay. And the new line, uh, we're going to select this. And on our bottom part, it's already been created. Now, again, we are going to add a timer on delay instruction. And so far, we have all the instructions that we need, but we're still missing one, which is a counter. So we add a different new line, and we're going to select our timers and counters category. So counter up. Now they're asking us to repeat this three times. Okay. And now we're going to start assigning uh, direction and indicating what each of these instructions is for. So our instruction is telling us here for our exercise that we use our zero file and our second timer uh, uh, T1. So we're going to assign names now. So my first instruction, my first timer, we are going to select, here we go, so it's T0, and it's telling us that for seven seconds, this, these are the variables that they're asking us for. So we're going to add them for now. And on the bottom part, uh, they're telling us not T0, but T1. Okay, so there we go. So we add this, and it's telling us uh, four seconds, no, three seconds. Perfect then. And then it's indicating us for our counter, which is our last instruction, that we do this three consecutive times. So then we need to direct or assign a memory to our counter, which is C semicolon zero. And it's been uh, indicated for three times, so that we're going to add our limit for this counting. We're going to add a three. Now, what's next, guys? Well, simply, uh, simply put, we're going to follow our instructions, and we're going to start solving them. So power on the lamp for seven seconds. Perfect. 
Now, if we wish to power it on for seven seconds, then me, in my case, I would use a flag for this timer, which we know is going to uh, start counting seven seconds. So the flag here would be uh, T0, and this is the file that matches. But it's not going to be a dot done. The flag is while you're timing, you're going to power on. So it's going to be dot TT. And so with this, it's somewhat solved. So we're going to analyze different things. Now, instruction number two, power off lamp for three seconds using a timer. Perfect then. And so if we wish to maintain or if we wish to uh, keep our light off, this lamp is going to be uh, all the while we uh, time or timing or this second timer is active, which is counting three seconds. Now, during that time, what do the instructions want? What do they require? What do they need that we do? It needs for the lamp to be shut off. So in this case, I'm thinking, telling it, or assigning the instruction. While timer one is uh, timing, you are going to uh, remain shut off. So in the first case, it's going to comply because it is timing. And this is not timing. My second timer is not timing. So therefore, a signal is going to flow. And this is going to power on. But surprise, surprise. Once this is timed and it's activated, you're going to power off. Now, something very important. What is going to activate my first timer or my second timer? My condition for my first timer is basically that uh, the timer number one that is not done, okay, perfect, so that it can start resetting it. So the first timer or timer one, as it stops uh, timing, is going to launch a bit it's going to launch a different signal it's going to cause for this to repeat so t0 now what else are we going to have now what is my timer number one uh going to cause to activate all we need is either it starts timing which would be after the first timer complies and so therefore we are going to add a, a regularly open contact. And we're going to redirect T0. And when it stops timing, I'm going to count for three seconds. Stop for three seconds, or stop counting three seconds. And that's going to uh, make my timer zero to reset just so that we don't get confused now our counter is activated and what is this going to activate what is going to indicate that it's done with our cycle what is a cycle actually it's telling us right now repeat steps one and two which means its last step to indicate that I'm actually counting one, two, or three, is going to be the last timer, timer one, which, or it's uh, to indicate T1 dot done. For that flag to give me a signal that it's done. Okay. Now, I want to do this only three times. I don't want to repeat this anymore or any longer. I don't have a condition which indicates this. 
Now, who sends all of this sequence would basically be timer zero. So I'm thinking adding a regularly closed contact, direct our counter, that done, and simply put when our preset is the same as our uh, accumulated, which means when three equals three, it's going to open and it's not going to allow for more flow, not even for the lamp or the output or even for timers. That's basically it. So now let's analyze this. So then this is in theory. Now we have our output timer one, timer two, and this is the only thing that can activate it. And all of this is going to open because this is not, since this is not going to comply with this, it's going to remain off. So I think it's ready now. Let's simulate this. If I made a mistake, that's quite all right, because ultimately, we're solving this live. So you're going to be able to watch my, uh, see my mistakes. Okay, so now let's start it now. So first timer starts. This is six, five, seven. Okay. It stays off for three seconds and here it already counted one. Perfect. Now here it's again on for seven seconds. Sorry, off three seconds. It all recounted two. Here again, it does this three times. Shuts off for three seconds. And it's not doing anything else. Did it do this three times? Yes, it did. So we're going to analyze our ladder diagram. So we're going to minimize this. So that's perfect. And again, we're going to reset. Now, lamp is powered on for seven seconds, uh, five, six, seven. So we get the other condition, which is the one that it starts or stops timing. So re-energize this. And as we can see here, it already added one. So three, it sends out the uh, pulse for T done. And this is telling me that is the second activation. Now, this is where it stays off. And I send out a pulse, which we already ran for three times. And in theory, the lamp should be off. Now, again, uh, light is powered on for seven seconds. And then afterwards, it's going to shut off for three seconds. So this is a full cycle. Let's try this again. Seven, light powers on. Five, six, seven, three seconds off, and it did it twice. This is the last time. This is our third time. Seven seconds on, three seconds off, and it should not power on, which it didn't. Perfect. So apparently we solved our, pro our exercise and our drill correctly. This is how we have the idea that you guys can start solving each drill and exercise as time passes by. So this is our first exercise. What did you guys think? Did you like this? How can you guys solve this? Our following drill is going to be our traffic light, which is also a very basic exercise, which all courses for industrial automation or PLCs that even for me, I did as a student, a, a college student. Now we're going to solve them in our animator PLC. What did you guys think? You guys have any more comments? How did you do it? Were you able to improve on this? Did you create more lines, more segments, or was this simplified even uh, to an, a larger extent? I'm reading you guys and I'm listening to you guys. I'll see you guys in our next video. Big hug.